Welcome back to the Miami Heat Chronicles. My name is Amir. Before I get started on today's episode, just want to thank everybody for supporting my channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and then also Martel's channel, the Miami Heat Zone podcast. Martel, how are you doing today? What's up, man? Let's talk some Miami Heat hoops. Sounds good, man. So I wanted to bring you on, Martel, for this episode to talk about Terry Rozier. So Andy Ellsberg um, basically said that the Miami Heat have already made their offseason move. And we know that we're all frustrated because we didn't really make any moves via free agency outside of Alec Burks. We haven't made a, a significant trade. But Andy Ellsberg basically said the writing was on the wall. We actually made our move with Terry Rozier. So what are your thoughts on that? that comment well i just don't understand how if you make a move last year that technically is the same move that you were going to make now you know what i mean i just think that that terry move last year was to get off of kyle lowry because kyle lowry really wasn't giving you much to be honest it's a shame that we really weren't able to see what terry rosier was going to be able to do in the playoffs because right before he got injured he was playing very well i think that's one of the biggest things that we couldn't see and especially the <clears throat> The questions with him and Tyler as a backcourt duo, especially defensively. I know a lot of people say that Terry's a good defender. Yeah, he's a good defender, but he's small. And I just think that if you have two guys that are not the best defenders as a backcourt, along with a 6'5 power forward potentially, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. I mean, I don't even think Terry's considered a good defender, in my opinion. So, um, I mean, he tries harder probably than a Tyler Hero. But Tyler Hero improved slightly on the defensive end last season. And that's a testament to the Miami Heat organization, um, which I think he did improve. But again, they're still going to be targeted because they're small. And when you have Bam and Abayo out there and you have Jimmy Butler on the floor um, and maybe like a Haywood Highsmith, like who else are you going to try to get that switch on, right, on screens? Like you're going to try to get Terry and Tyler on you. Um, yeah, I don't know if I... I, I love the idea that like we made this move now um, as opposed to seeing what's available in the future. So of course we didn't want to waste Kyle Lowry's expiring contract because they wanted to give Jimmy Butler help last season, right? Like they weren't able to do it during the off season. As we all know, we failed in acquiring Damian Lillard, but they wanted to make sure that they did try to get Jimmy Butler some help, even though, it did seem redundant adding Terry Rozier, but I mean, what other pieces do you think would have made more sense? Cause like they are redundant to your point. They're not, they're both combo guards, right? They're not, we need a floor general or we also needed size. Like, would you have rather made like two other smaller moves? Cause Terry's making 25, right? We could have got someone who's making like 15 million and 10 million or 12 million and 12 million. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, who do you think we missed out on? Well, it's hard to say who we missed out on because the Miami Heat only had a small asset to even move Kyle Lowry. And you also have to think about what were the teams that were willing to take on Kyle Lowry. So I think that this Miami Heat team, they have a lot to figure out. Now, I understand why they're saying they want to run it back, but they've been saying that they're going to you know, run it back for the past few years. And I know a lot of people are saying that we have four 20-point-per-game scores, but we have not been able to see it. And... You know, can Eric Spolstra figure out this offense to where Jimmy Bam and Tyler can all flow as a cohesive group together? That's my concern. And, you know, we've never been able to see this team healthy. I'm not saying that everyone needs to play 82 games, but we all have to be available to really see what this team can do. Sorry, I was on mute. So... You brought up the point, you know, we have four 20-point scores, and, and that was a, a focus area when we wanted to make a move. Kyle Lowry was averaging, what, eight points per game, taking, like, seven shots. Like, at times, was, like, not willing to take three-pointers. Um, so bringing in Terry, who was averaging 23, 24 points per game on the Hornets, was to help alleviate our poor offensive um, scoring. Like, we're again, I always mention this, we are bottom three in scoring last season, and 21st in offensive rating. But again, just because we had a 23 point score doesn't mean he's going to score that many on Miami Heat. He was in a different situation on a poor team with injuries, right? Bridges was out and whoever else, uh, Lonzo, or not Lonzo, uh, Mellow Ball was out for a long time. 
So of course Terry was going to score that many points. So I hate when people say we have four 20 point scores. We're not going to, they're all not going to score 20 points. You know, there's not, there's only one ball, but anyway, um, it's good. It's a quiet off season. There's still plenty of time for the Miami heat to potentially make a trade. I know we're not going to do anything via free agency because we're $1 million away from the second apron. And this Miami heat team desperately is trying to avoid that because if we become a second apron team and add one more person to the roster, which we have one more spot, we have 14 men, we will become a second apron team, which means you can't use your mid-level exception. You can't make that trade. If someone does magically become available, like Barry Jackson mentioned, the Miami Heat are going to wait to see if a player is going to fall out of the sky. If that happens, we can't aggregate salary. So we would have to trade one player for that player. Um, and you also can't buy out any players um, in the midseason. So we essentially can only make a move via trade. We'll see what happens. There's two, three months left. Um, the most we can do right now is just enjoy summer league and hope none of these players get hurt in the interim. Yeah, but they're also banking on the um, personal development within their team, which I think is possible. But that's a very, very big gamble to say that, you know, Jaime and Jovic are going to take a leap. <clears throat> Tyler will improve. I think Bam Adebayo, especially with him right now playing Team USA, I think he's only going to come back better. And then they're also saying that with Jimmy Butler on his contract year, he's going to want to get paid. But you're telling me that you need all those scenarios to go right? Is it possible? Y yes. If there's one team in the league that could do it, which is the Miami Heat, I agree. But I think that's just a very big gamble that we're willing to take instead of just trying to shuffle up the core, even though they're not really in the position to shuffle up this core. Because let's say that we have to attach a pick to trade Tyler Hero. They don't want to do that because all you're doing is continuing – to give up assets to get off bad contracts. So, like, we can't even make a move even if we really wanted to. Yeah. And that's a lot of player development that we're um, hoping for and expecting. Like, Terry, we already know what he is as a, a finished product. He's going to be 30 years old. But we're hoping that he assimilates, stays healthy, and that he could be a good scorer. And then, of course, we're hoping for Tyler Hero to have that leap so he could be that 25-point game score like that 1A score on our team, not the 1A best player on our team. But again, we're hoping for that. Now we're hoping for Jovic to take a leap. We're hoping for Jaime to take a leap. We're hoping for Kalel Ware to uh, show that he could be a really good player and a steal at the 15th pick. So to your point, anything's possible, but it's going to be hard for all those things to go right. Plus, we just need everybody to be healthy and we need Jimmy to be engaged. So who knows? It's going to be an interesting season next season, Mar Martel. Um, I am still looking forward to it, even though I am a little disappointed in um, the fact that we are running it back to a certain degree. But I still, again, a diehard Miami Heat fan, and I'm excited to see what can happen and hoping that we do have that development and growth internally. So anyway, thanks for hopping on, Martel. Really appreciate your time. Again, don't forget, guys, to go to Martel's channel, the Miami Heat Zone podcast, and subscribe. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Team to Beat Miami Heat. Thanks again.